I'm a guy who, for all intents and purposes, never should have made it in life. I had roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. This isn't me stuttering by the way. I had roadblocks thrown in my way all my life. But not only did I get past those roadblocks, I did it while proving the people who put up those roadblocks wrong. I feel I have a responsibility to other people who don't stammer to change their perception of stammering. I certainly can't change it by sitting in my car in Surrey. Hi, I am Michael Derrick Adams. I am 20 years old and I got a condition that I haven't been really open about to my friends and fa family, only a certain few know that, that I'm happy to talk about it. I have a condition that affects 70 million people in the world today. I got a condition called a stammer, or commonly used as stutter. My t stammer, stammer, um, it's, it did, didn't really show, sh showed, um, showed the effect that it would have in my life. So when I got to age eight, and that's where I saw my stammer really develop, because um, when when every time I spoke, I used to grit my teeth. But I thought thought to to myself, okay, and that's just a habit or habit all kids go through. But. Um, I um you used to couldn't get my name out because I used to um, stumble on the first syllable of the word or the first letter of the word so M Michael and it was very very frust frustrating because I not knew I had the stammer. But um, in like to this day, I can remember in school when in school um, when when they made you say your your name to sign in. So when 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 I was in my primary, they used to make you stand in front of the class to say 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 your name. So we we would say good morning class. 
my name is Michael Daryl McAdams. I can say <laughs> I could say it's okay now, but when I was eight, I used to find it so so hard to just say my name, and I didn't get why the other people, my other classmates, um, could say their names perfectly but I couldn't even say my name. And by the time I got my name out, I used to have, have my head down in shame because I um, used to feel horrendous inside because I didn't get it. So my, my first question is, can you explain simply what a stammer is? Mm. Well, in some ways there's a lot about stammering that isn't that simple, but at one level it is about ways in which the forward flow of speech becomes stopped by different repetitions in speech or prolonging speech sounds or getting blocked so nothing's coming out at all. So in a way that's to do with what's happening to the speech process that people might be able to see. But underneath that or inside that experience for people there are often a lot to do with emotions related to speaking and having difficulty or ways of coping with it which might be a lot less evident to the casual listener. So we often use the metaphor of an iceberg actually to talk about this and to just help to explain what this experience of stammering can be like for somebody. So in a way we can think of the um, surface part of an iceberg, that's the bit that we know we can see, that's like the repetitions in someone's speech, the prolongations, the blocks, the struggle that someone might have when they're trying to get through a moment of stammering. And then the underneath part of the iceberg, that's the bit that some people who stammer will experience and that's emotions, Maybe fear, maybe anxiety, maybe embarrassment or frustration. <sighs> um, so when, like every day when I got home, I used to be so angry because I, I just couldn't say my name. I, I, I couldn't even speak. So um, my pa parents noticed I always get 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 all frustrated because of that. Um, so um, so one um, one day my dad made me watch a film called Enter the Dragon by Bruce Lee, and um, Bruce Bruce Lee was the best martial artist in the world in the 1970s and he released a film called Enter the Dragon, a Kung Fu film. So when I was sat there watching it, I was hooked. I was hooked and my dad used to be a karate teacher when, when, he, he, when, when he was younger. So my dad and my mum thought it would be a very good idea to get me into that because it would help my self-discipline, my anger, and my control. So um, I can remember to this day when my, my dad, and I, I think my mum was doing some, so my sister went with my dad, and I can remember when my dad handed me the Kung Fu note, saying you start on Monday, and that, 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 that was the happy beatings I felt because I, I thought I could take my frustration out on a punching bag or, or something to get that anger because stammering is not just um, how you speak, it's all the other things as well that people don't re realise what a stammer is. So, um, so um, after I went to come through schools in Croydon, um, after I went through a few classes, my teacher noticed a big difference in me. 
I was more confident. I was more um, will, willing to talk. I still had, I still had the same struggles, saying my name and just talking. But I think with stammering, the most thing you have to achieve is confidence. My name is Alan Patterson, Super Alan Patterson. I'm an instructor of Comfort Schools Croydon, a director of Comfort Schools organisation. And we here in Croydon have one of the largest martial arts schools in the country with 926 students from four to our oldest at 72. I'm a fourth degree in Wing Chun Kung Fu. How has Kung Fu helped my self-discipline? So how do we, we address it? So first and foremost, with Michael, as, as he's, uh, uh, we've seen him grow, and we've known Michael since he was seven, and he's come to the school. So as you develop through life, you go through in self-disciplines, you try to write neater. You get things prepared, ready for school. You start getting in charge of your own discipline. So when you're in charge of your own discipline, you're in charge of your own destiny. So things that change from being young, a little bit scruffy and everything else, to being a smarter dresser. So one of the things that first notice from Michael, he, he likes to dress smart. So he's in charge of self-discipline. What would you say to someone who has lost faith in himself with a stammer? Believe in yourself. Take your weaknesses and make them your strength. Look in the mirror, talk to yourself. Like we uh, said, you can sing without a stammer. You can shout without a stammer. Take your time. Don't let people rush you. Pause. Think before you speak. And if someone tries to hurry you, say, let me finish politely. But be in charge of your own destiny. Take your weaknesses, train your weaknesses. You are who, what you are. I can lose weight, I can gain weight, but I cannot be taller. So I live with it, I make the best. You only have one life, believe in yourself. When um, did you, your stammer first develop? It was about when when I was um, a f four, and I went on on holiday, and um, it the the weather was really warm, and it it, it affected my s s all like like sleep patterns and. I, I, it, it, my, my stammer uh, it, it, um, started then, uh, last about a year, and then it 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 really bad it, it, it impact on me. I, I, I've been stammering ever since then. So my second question is um, how has your stammer changed your life? It's it, it, it changed my life in like all areas whether it's like like confidence it's re really affected my confidence and my like social life so I'll be at college and I'd want to say something but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it because I'd be afraid I might stutter and then in, in my like making friends and stuff I'd be too afraid to speak to them because out the back of my mind, I'll be thinking, are they gonna judge me for this? And what would they think if I stutter in front of them and they never met someone who stuttered and yeah. So after leaving high school, I was in a bit of a dilemma. 
because I weren't getting that speech therapy in anymore. I was just going to start college in September. And I um, thought, thought to, to myself, what would I do? And I found my confidence dropped I again. And I found my speech was getting worse. So um, af after, um, after like trying to get the confidence back, I got a phone call from the Michael Palin Centre in London. The Michael Palin Centre is a place that people can come and talk about stammering and be open about it, ask questions about it and talk about their experiences, which is maybe something quite new. So lots of people who come here might not have talked in depth about their stammering before. Um, so it's a place where people can hopefully feel really comfortable talking about their experiences of stammering and to help them to feel more confident in handling it. So, um, and being, being a, commu a confident communicator, whether you're stammering or not. I can't remember the first day I tra travelled up by train. My first like real tra travel when I was 16. I tra travelled to Lon London and on the first day they made us sit in this room with everyone who was going to be in the room. But I, I thought to myself in my head it was about eight pe people in the room. Let's make a joke. Let's break the ice a bit. So I made a joke and Nat broke the ice with people in the room. And after um, speaking to the people in the room who I'm going to be in the course with for two weeks, I found myself like I was talking to myself. Like every like, story was so similar to me, all the self-doubt, the anger, they uh, felt also after get, getting to know people, people at the Michael Payton Centre. I have uh, I felt felt like more more happy or inside. So um, I I made so uh, I made so many friends like Ollie, Nafisa, Jazz, and like a lot of um, of uh, pe people. And my speech for Kevin and Sarah one day said, um, we got a special guest coming in. And everyone said, oh, well, who's um, that? And um, they said, Michael Palin himself. And everyone in the room was so happy. And, and Michael Palin known for Malfin Python, the most famous se series or film. So, um, on the day of my, my campaign, he came in in a shirt and um, jeans, a Martin jeans, and um, El he sat in the room. Everyone was asking him questions, and I, I asked him, why did you open the Michael Palin Centre? And he said his dad had a stammer. And um, I said to him, I said, oh my God, that's so amazing. You opening a centre for people who stammer like your dad. And I have never met someone so genuine in my life because he was so interested in what you were say, saying. And um, like, it, it's, I still got the photo today. Me and my, Michael Payne wore the exact same outfit. It wasn't the same make, but it was the exact same like outfit type of things. And I uh, only said to me, oh yeah, you, you, would you want to be Michael Payne? I said, yes, I would travel around, around the world and that. When um, did you, your stammer first event look? It started uh, from as long as I can remember, uh, from when I was about four, starting school. I think it was 
due to my mum and dad splitting up when I was about three. That's all I can think is why, why it happened and it just got worse while I was at school. So my second question is, um, how has your stammer changed your life? It's changed my life because I don't answer the phone. Uh, I don't speak to people that much. Um, one time, it was my mate's wedding. I was his best man and he wanted me to do the speech and I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do the speech and that's it. You just let him down. I'm going to end this documentary by answering one of my questions I've been asking throughout the documentary. What would I say to someone who has lost faith in themselves with a stammer? So I'm going to be breaking every single rule of interviews by facing directly into the camera. So what would I say? I'm going to firstly talk to people without stammers. So my advice to you is give us a chance to talk because if you don't give us a chance to talk it will stick into our minds through 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 all our lives thinking what bad experience I had with that person not allowing me to talk. My second thing is don't treat us any differently to anyone else because we do have a stammer but it don't mean we we not we aren't the same as you the third thing is don't tell us to breathe because the most frustrating thing is we know what to say up here but we can't get it out so my last thing is what would i say to someone who has lost faith in themselves with a stammer is never give up don't think you're the last don't think you're you are the first person to go through it don't think you're the last person to go through it be proud to have a stammer because if you're not proud who would be proud for you My advice is um, make sure you shout shout up out to the root root of to be you have a stammer because if you're not confident about talking about it, who would be confident for for you? And I'm gonna end it like this. We spend every day of our lives fighting what we can't control. But we don't think what positive energy a stammer brings into our lives. Stop fighting a stammer. Be proud to have a stammer. And let's change people's perception of stammering. I have never been proud to say I have a stammer, but I'm going to end it like this. I'm Michael Darrow Regadams. I have got a condition called a stammer. I am very, very proud to have one. And my stammer is me. So I'm 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 here here with a special guest, Michael Palin. How, Hi, how Michael. Are you? How are you? You I'm um, very you, well. um, you today. <laughs> So uh, thanks so much um, for um, your time. I allow allow win um, us 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 here here to yes, interview um, you. you. It, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure. So uh, my uh, first question is, um, what did why did you open the Michael Palin Centre? The build up to it was that I had made a film called A Fish Called Wonder, which probably known which I 
was required by John Cleese to play someone who had a stammer and therefore at the vital uh, moment uh, yeah, uh, yeah, couldn't uh, give the information uh, okay, as they don't uh, worry, as quickly don't worry. as they wanted you it. Know they and that, you know, yeah, I, I love John's fine, writing fine. and I like working with John. I was a little bit worried because my father had a stammer. Hotel. And uh, I thought, is this sort Which of um, exploiting it or whatever? And I thought, well, you know, why not? There are characters, there are people who stammer. Why shouldn't they be in films? The great thing is to try and get it accurately and try and sort of portray uh, not just stammering as a sort of comedy device. Oh, there's God bad, talking to bad, us. Bad, bad yes, wonder. sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. That's loud. Wrong answer, Michael. <laughs> Do it again. So, um, uh, um, so John then asked me, and I, I was glad to have taken part in the film, and we, we sort of explored really a little bit more about the background to a stammer, so it wasn't just a comedy device. Um, the film was very successful, and afterwards, um, a man called Travers Reed got in touch with me and said, look, I'm uh, involved in, I'm a stammerer myself, I'm involved in um various initiatives and one thing we're trying to do is to set up a, a center especially for dealing with stammering in childhood which he said you know stammer can begin very very early and it also can be dealt with very early if you do it properly and and so i thought that just uh, w was the most perfect thing i could i i would want to support because i think if my father had had that sort of um treatment if people had talked about stammering in the way they didn't at his when he was alive uh, he might have had a totally different kind of life and so i said sure i'll do it um and i was very proud that it worked so well um and very very uh, to this day it's, it's it's my most cherished of all my involvements and all my charity involvements Yes, um, I I have been been there, and it um, has changed my life. I'm more confident about stammering mm. because because of that. You um, should uh, should be uh, proud of um, yourself. So my well, second. So should you. <laughs> <laughs> so so my second question: What were your thoughts on the film The King's Speech? I thought um, I actually enjoyed The King's Speech a lot. I thought it was very. It was very well done and um, a very good performance by by Colin Firth and uh, especially at the end when he has to give the big speech uh, I felt um, very close to that sort of situation because I know that my father had uh, occasionally to make public speeches or stand up and you know, work and make a speech and how difficult it was uh, it wasn't that he didn't have a lot to say, quite the opposite. He had a lot to say, but it was just that fear of coming Goodness up against grave. the various uh, difficult brick walls of a stammer might face and how to avoid them and all that. And I thought, I thought that the, the film dealt with, it, dealt with it very well. And it, it also resulted in people becoming far more aware of stammer, stammering and stammerers. And, and why it was caused and how it worked and all that sort of thing. And I can remember when I was young listening to At the time Queen, uh, sorry, the King's speech <laughs> in, before 1953 when it was when uh, George VI. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, with my father there, this was an awkward situation. Yeah. Um, so I feel anything that, that enables people generally to discuss stammering and talk about it rather than pretend it's not happening and cause even more pressure is a good thing. So I think the film is a good thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you my last question. I no. have been asking through, throughout the documentary. What would you say to someone who has lost faith in themselves with a stammer, lost hope? <sighs> I'd say that the stammer is not you, you know, you are something else. You've got thoughts, you've got ideas, you've got a personality, which is which is there. It is it, in a way, a stammer is a little symptom of, of something that's there in your life. It isn't the whole thing. And you've got to look at yourself and say, what have I got? What talents have I got? 
Um, am I, you know, am I a good organiser? Am I a good writer? All things you can do without having to worry about the stammer coming out or not. So I would say look for the positive things in yourself um, that aren't, that, you know, that, and don't let, don't let the stammer sort of uh, control or, or inhibit all your life because that's completely wrong. It's like someone, I don't know, you know, saying, well, um, I've got a bad leg and I can't, I'll never be able to walk properly. I, I can understand people sometimes getting uh, depressed about it, but that's one little bit of your life and that you can't see it as your whole life. You've got to realize that there are many other things you can still do. And so I would just say, you know, make the best of the good days, <laughs> which is always my, my philosophy of life. See? 